Hi, and welcome to Crash Course Cryptozoology. A few months ago, I did a poll on my channel with a few ideas concerning what video topic would be interesting for the channel to cover next, and most of the people who voted voted for the recent Megalodon sonar incident in Rhode Island. Now, of course, having some months going by here, this is somewhat old news, but it is still very important to talk about a case like this because it really does give us really good insights into the potential pitfalls in cryptozoological research and really any area of zoological or generally biological research that deals with things like photographic evidence. Before we get into the overview and sort of get into the deeper details of the incident, I think it's important to talk about the group that was involved with a sonar image that is the subject of this story. That group being the Atlantic Shark Institute. The Atlantic Shark Institute is a sort of half-science, half-conservation organization based in New England that studies the species of sharks found in the Atlantic Ocean, especially, of course, in the coast of North America, and talks with other groups about coordinating research, discovering more about these sharks, learning more about their lives, and, of course, using a lot of that to go into the conservation of sharks. Sharks are, for many reasons, high targets for ocean hunters, whether that's using sharks for food, even though it's a very small minority of the shark that often gets used, whether sharks pose problems to fish habitat or to seal habitat in some cases. There's a lot that sharks face for being predators and the adept predators that they are that puts them at risk, and groups like the Atlantic Shark Institute are there not just to help learn about these sharks, but also to help learn how we can coexist with these sharks. These are people who are very official in this organization and very professional as well, and this organization is taken very seriously. Now, on to the incident regarding the sonar image. On September 4th, 2022, the Atlantic Shark Institute's Facebook page was updated with a very, very interesting sonar image showing a very, very large red-colored reading in the water shaped, essentially, like a large shark. The problem being that looking at the measurements and going off of what the Facebook post actually says as well, this shark would have had to have been 50 feet long by itself, which, of course, is no laughing matter. Instantly, many people online would have thought upon seeing this image that this could finally be some strong sonar evidence for the existence of the Megalodon. The Megalodon was a prehistoric species of shark that died off around 2 million years ago, but is thought to have existed for tens of millions of years, being an apex predator for its time, and was indeed an enormous shark. We mostly have fossil teeth to account for the existence of Megalodon, and again, nothing has been found past 2 million years. But occasional reports of extremely large sharks have had some thinking that perhaps there are extant megalodon populations living deep in the ocean. This is actually considered a sort of controversial subject in cryptozoology because a lot of the megalodon evidence out there, so to speak, can be interpreted in multiple ways and it usually ends up being the case that the more accurate way to interpret the case based on what the case actually shows the circumstances of these cases doesn't really pertain to Megalodon, instead pertains to misidentifications on footage of larger sharks that are just getting a little bit bigger than they usually do, historical hoaxes in some cases, etc, etc. This isn't really a hoax, but it is a misidentification, and what's important about it is the circumstances. To get a better idea of what really happened when this sonar image was caught, I will now read the Facebook post that was accompanying this image posted by the Atlantic Shark Institute on the 4th of September. It reads, Does the Meg exist? On a recent shark research trip, we were all amused to see this shape appear on our fish finder for several minutes. Based on the length of the image, we estimated the Meg to be about 50 feet long, weighing in at 40 tons. We waited for one of the rods to go off, however, much to our disappointment, the shape started to transition into a large school of Atlantic mackerel that hung around the boat for about 15 minutes. So close, but so far. The megalodon, Ototus megalodon, disappeared more than 3 million years ago, and will likely stay that way. But, for a few minutes, we thought he had returned. 
So, to put it into a more straightforward and short worded explanation, the shape that we're seeing that looks like a 50 foot shark is actually a group of very small fish that have arranged themselves into a large grouping that appeared on a fish finder to be one large continuous shape. That shape happened to have resembled a shark superficially. That sort of thing isn't an uncommon phenomenon. Of course, everyone probably is familiar with the idea of schools of fish, but them being shaped in suspicious ways is something that happens relatively often. In fact, on the post, a man named Jared Bennett commented that he had, in fact, seen a very similar phenomenon appear on his fish finder, and even included an image of what is a bit more clearly seen to be very small objects comprising a shape that, again, kind of does roughly resemble a large shark, which of course can be misinterpreted, perhaps, as an extant megalodon. So why talk about this case? It seems like a small footnote. In reality, it appears to be that a lot of Megalodon cases are the results of believing things or taking them at face value. And the truth often ends up being that face value faith isn't always reliable. In fact, most of the time, it's not. It's good to question ourselves. Keep in mind, even the people on the boat were really kind of shocked when they first saw this, and for a few minutes believed they had really had a groundbreaking discovery. And these are people who use fish finders very often, and who are very familiar with the wildlife in the area. This wasn't a person who had just discovered what a fish finder was, and was seeing the first result ever from it. These are people who do this for a living, and do this out of passion for a large part of them. And even they had to wait around and see what would unfold in the next few minutes to really get an idea of what this situation actually was. And it turned out to be a much, much different and much less cryptozoological situation. Not only is this a great exercise in understanding pareidolia, seeing patterns when there might not actually be any patterns, but it's also a good exercise in understanding that not everyone is immune to pareidolia. No one is. Pareidolia can exist in many different forms, and literally take many different forms, visually speaking, and to fall for it is a highly circumstantial outcome. And because it's so highly circumstantial, it can also be very varied, and might not be as uncommon among even trained people as one might think. So. When you're investigating any kind of case, whether it's cryptozoological or examining evidence for a known species in an area, anything like this, always make sure to check yourself. Because a face value observation isn't the entire scenario, and is therefore not the entire observation. That being said, until next time.